o'clock this morning. I've been making that a habit. I set myself uh, a goal to consistently wake up at four o'clock in the morning. For me, that allows for me to, to, to get up, have a talk with God. Uh, first thing I do is start checking my emails, even before I brush my teeth. I know some people say it's backwards, but look, I'm an entrepreneur. I got to get it. Don't nobody else pay my bills but me. Uh, as I went through scrolling through my emails, it was an email that stuck out to me, and it was from a company uh, where I had ordered some online services a while ago. And they were trying to do an automatic renewal. Know, so they sent me a message that said they were unable to renew my account because I had insufficient funds. The card that I gave them had insufficient funds. For me, that kind of struck a nerve in my brain and went down and said, hold on, it's, it's fun. I know in my other accounts, there's money. And it's, a, it's more than enough money to pay those bills. So... How can a company tell me that I have insufficient funds? Then I went to think and I said, you know what, Slim? That's the story of your life. That's the story of your life. All this time, you've been having the company tell you that you had insufficient funds. You didn't have enough money or you didn't have what it took to get whatever, whatever it was you were trying to get done. Get it accomplished. See, I remember being in school and I had a guidance counselor telling me I should drop out in 11th grade because there's no way in the world I was going to be able to graduate on time. You know, I, I remember having a, a, a judge tell me, hey, man, you done messed up too many times. There ain't no turning back. Ain't nothing we can do for you. The only thing we can do is ship you off. I've been meeting with my team for about the past two months on something I've been working on for the past five and a half years. And we're preparing to go into 13 counties. And our objective for those 13 counties is to be able to reach over 755,000 people within the next year. Now, when I present that idea to the majority of people or even some of the people that I come across, they look at me and say, well, you must be out your rabbit mind. I look at that same idea, that same situation, and it's, it's easy for me to say 755,000 people, that's nothing. It's nothing compared to where this is going. I understand my value. You understand my worth. I know what's inside of here. Just because someone else hasn't figured out, that's not my problem. I firmly believe that we place too much value into the opinions of others and the value that they place on us. But what if we flipped it around and we place more value on what we think about ourselves and our ideas? and our dreams and our visions, and we apply the work ethic that it takes to make it all happen. I do a lot of research. I'm, I'm constantly trying to find information, and, and some of the some of the, the research that I've done, um, it showed, I, I did a study on millionaires, and, and different types of millionaires and billionaires, and the people that uh, became extremely uh, financially successful. And what I found out that 90%, 90 90% out of 100, 90% of all millionaires started out absolutely broke. They started out with nothing. Now, for example, we can look at a guy like um, Sheldon Adelson. With, with him, he started out selling newspapers. He's now worth $21.5 billion. We can look at a guy like Jay-Z. We know the story of Jay-Z. started out in Marcy Project selling crack. He's now worth $450 million. We, we can look at John Paul DeJario. Uh, started out in, in East L.A. Uh, when he was growing up, he was in gangs. You know, he had a teacher that told him he'll never amount to nothing. He took a $700 loan and turned it into a $4 billion business. Now, you can look at uh, uh, Howard Schultz. Howard Schultz grew up in uh, Canarsie Projects in Brooklyn. Uh, guy had nothing. Came from a family, uh, his, his dad was a truck driver. Uh, he came up with this brilliant idea of opening up full cafes that serve nothing but coffee, espressos, lattes, cookies, brownies. Uh, the funny thing was, when he pitched that idea to a company that was already in business, they looked at him like he was crazy, laughed in his face. He is now the owner of Starbucks. He turned into a $1.1 billion company. So what we have there is four examples of, of people 
who started with absolutely nothing but a dream that no one else believed in but themselves. They had to deal with the judgment of the world, the, the, the companies that told them that your idea, your dream is worth nothing, it's worthless. You have insufficient funds to do what it is that you're talking about doing. And in my 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 research of, of studying uh, of millionaires, uh, the, the the two common things I found uh, that these millionaires all, all had was they dreamed big and they took massive action. So the next time that, that someone chooses to laugh at your ideas or tells you that your dream is worthless, your value is worthless, you have insufficient funds inside of your bank account, you can always look at those four people and see that it is possible if you grind until they cut the check. This is Team Tuesday. Every Tuesday we're dropping a new video. There's somebody that needs to hear this. So make sure you don't hold it in, keep it to yourself. Share with, share with somebody that can actually use it. In the meantime, check out the website, www.teammotivations.com, with an S, teammotivations.com. Uh, Facebook, Team Motivation, uh, the YouTube channel is Team Motivation USA, no spaces. So every Tuesday, every Tuesday, Team Tuesdays. See you next week, Team Motivation.